hope it's a good day today. It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. Today, it's time to talk about erythropoiesis, which is the formation of red blood cells. And of course, if your bone marrow wants to make red blood cells, we need stimulation from erythropoietin. We need iron because it's a raw material. And we need to stimulate cell division thanks to B12 and folate. This is my physiology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Today's video is number 63. This discussion will be very brief. If you want the detailed stuff with all of the pathologies, check out my hematology playlist and my bleeding and coagulation playlist here on YouTube. Hematopoiesis, what does that mean? Hemato means a blood. Poiesis means synthesis. Synthesis of blood cells, making blood cells. Where did it happen when you were a fetus? It first occurred in the yolk sac, then your liver, then your spleen, then your bone marrow. If you're an adult, it's your bone marrow. So, yolk sac, liver, spleen, bone marrow. Yolk sac, liver, spleen, bone marrow. Or you can use the mnemonic, you love a smart bunny. Let's talk about your bone marrow. It can make red blood cells, it can make platelets, and it can make white blood cells. How can we stimulate the bone marrow formation of red blood cells? Use EPO, erythropoietin, because these are the erythrocytes. How can we stimulate plate formation? Use TPO, thrombopoietin, because these are the thrombocytes. How can we stimulate the formation of those granulocytes? We need granulocyte colony stimulating factor. To stimulate the monocyte, you need monocyte colony stimulating factor. All of this is hematopoiesis. But when we focus on the red blood cell formation alone, this is called erythropoiesis. We start with pluripotent stem cells, then myeloid stem cells, then proerythroblast, then erythroblast, normoblast, reticulocytes, and then the mature erythrocytes or red blood cells. Where does this happen in adults? In the bone marrow. Who stimulates this? EPO, erythropoietin hormone. Where does it come from? Kidney and liver. If you are an adult, mostly from the kidney. If you are a fetus, mostly from the liver. Quick review, red blood cells are circular, biconcave, and non-nucleated. Lifespan is about 120 days. Red blood cell count is usually higher in neonates, athletes, and people who live at high altitudes. The red blood cell contains hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made of heme and globin. Heme is made of iron and protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin becomes biliverdin, which becomes bilirubin. As you know, your red blood cell carries oxygen from the lungs to the tissue and carries carbon dioxide from the tissue to the lungs. All right, red blood cells gonna go to the lung, get the oxygen that you just inhaled in. <gasps> and then get the oxygen on the red blood cell, specifically on the hemoglobin, and then we will release that hemoglobin to tissue. The first process is called loading or binding of the hemoglobin to oxygen. The second process is called unloading or dissociation, because the oxygen is being dissociated from the hemoglobin. What's the purpose of EPO? EPO goes to the bone marrow and tells the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. Where is EPO secreted from? From the kidneys, mostly, and from the liver, partly. Of course, if you have anemia, this is a stimulus to secrete more EPO because I'm having less blood cells. Let me make more EPO to increase the red blood cell count. Stimulus response. To achieve equilibrium, hashtag homeostasis. Tell me more about EPO. It's a glycoprotein hormone. It's made by the kidney and the liver. Its job is to stimulate the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. Let's say have anemia. If you have anemia, this will stimulate more erythropoietin secretion. What are the causes of anemia? We have gazillion causes. Just to name a few, it could be hemorrhage. Oh, I'm losing blood, including red blood cells. So I will secrete more EPO. I'm having heart failure. I'm not pumping the blood hard enough. EPO will increase. I do not have the raw material iron. Anemia and EPO will increase. B12 or folate deficiency will cause anemia and EPO will increase to stimulate the bone marrow to make more red blood cell. In other words, when your red blood cell count drops, this stimulates the formation of more red blood cells. This is an example of a negative feedback. Another stimulus for EPO secretion is hypoxia. What does hypo mean? Low. What does oxy mean? Oxygen. When oxygen is low, the tissue is not receiving oxygen. 
which means the red blood cells are not performing their job properly. Therefore, EPO will increase. What are the causes of hypoxia? We have gazillion causes, including asthma, chronic bronchitis and emphysema are known as COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, high altitude and athletes. Hypoxia, boom, more EPO, more red blood cell. What stimulates EPO production? We have physiological factors, we have pathological factors, we have cancer, which is also a pathology. Physiological factors, androgens and estrogens. But the effect of androgen on EPO is way greater than the effect of estrogen on EPO. And this is one of the reasons why men on average have more blood than women. Men have more blood, therefore more red blood cells, a higher hemoglobin concentration, and a higher hematocrit value than women, with some exceptions, of course. Thyroid hormone, glucocorticoids, catecholamines, which include epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, beta adrenergic stimulation, so sympathetic, high altitude, which causes <laughs> hyperventilation, which causes alkalosis, adenosine, and cobalt. Pathology, anemia and hypoxia, all of these will increase EPO production. How about cancers? Where does EPO normally come from? Kidney and liver. Therefore, if I have cancer in the kidney or cancer in the liver, I will secrete more EPO. It makes perfect sense. Let's talk about iron. And again, for a more detailed discussion, check out my hematology playlist. I have two videos about iron. All right, iron input versus output. How do you get iron into your body? Food. How do you get it out of your body? It doesn't get out of your body. With some exceptions, epithelial shedding and menstruation. Other than that, your iron will not leave. And that's why everyone is vulnerable to iron overload, especially men, because they do not menstruate. So men are more vulnerable to iron overload, but menstruating females are more vulnerable to iron deficiency. Here's a great mnemonic thanks to Ellie from New York. Iron gets absorbed in the duodenum. Folate gets absorbed in the jejunum. Cobalamin, which is vitamin B12, gets absorbed in the terminal ileum. So the mnemonic is first you iron your clothes, then you fold them, and then you put them in the closet. So iron first, then folate, and then cobalamin. Duodenum, jejunum, terminal ileum. So iron is absorbed in the duodenum. Why the duodenum? Because the duodenum comes just after the stomach. And why do I need the stomach? Because you need the acid of the stomach. And why do I need the acid of the stomach? To reduce this iron from the ferric form to the ferrous form. The ferrous is more easily absorbed. The ferric is not. So here's the deal. You eat iron in the ferric form, usually. And then it's gonna change from ferric to ferrous thanks to the hydrochloric acid. Ferrous will be absorbed from the duodenum into the bloodstream. And then iron is in the bloodstream. It's going to jump on transferrin, which is a plasma protein that carries iron. Transferrin, transporter of iron. And we are here. Okay, where should I give that iron to? You can give it to the bone marrow to make red blood cells. You can give it to the liver to store it, or you can store it in other tissues such as your regular cells. When the iron was alone in the blood, this was called free serum iron. Transferrin is also known as TIBC. When the iron is stored in the tissue, it's called ferritin. Why are we always taking iron from the blood and putting it somewhere? Why don't you just leave it free in the blood? Because if Fe is left free by the Fenton reaction, it will give the hydroxyl free radicals, which are freaking bad. F that Fenton reaction is gonna kill you. If you have iron deficiency as a negative feedback, you will absorb more iron and you will release more iron from the storage units. Conversely, if you have too much iron, you will absorb less and release less. Who is the organizer of this? Something called hepcidin. If it ends in IN, it's probably a protein. Again, if you want to dig deeper into this stuff, go to my hematology playlist. Iron should be normal in your body. Too little iron, you have iron deficiency anemia. Too much iron, you get hemosiderosis and or hemochromatosis. In hemochromatosis, your skin will get darker. It will get a bronze color. Your liver is history. Your pancreas is toast. Since you're getting that bronze color 
and the pancreas is bad, we call this disease bronze diabetes. Let's talk about folate or vitamin B9. To learn more about this, check out my folate video in my biochemistry playlist. Let's eat some of these green leafy vegetables. Where is folate absorbed in the jejunum? The J mnemonic for folate. It's absorbed in the jejunum and it needs conjugase enzyme. You eat green leafy vegetables and make your mama happy. Now, green leafy vegetables here, conjugase will help you absorb folate. Now, folate is in the blood in the form of tetrahydrofolate. Thank you so much. But unfortunately, it's bound to methyl. We hate that methyl. Let me dump it on the B12. Now, THF is free. B12 hates the methyl. Let me dump it. Dump it on what? On homocysteine. Now, homocysteine will become methionine. So, homocysteine plus the methyl group equals methionine. What should we call the enzyme? You can call it homocysteine methyltransferase, I love it, or methionine synthase, because it's the enzyme that makes methionine. It makes sense. All right, back to tetrahydrofolate. Tetrahydrofolate is now free. It'll become 5 and 10 methylene or dimethyl THF, and then DHF, and then THF, and this is a very important enzyme called DHF reductase or dihydrofolate reductase. It's targeted by many medications. Long story short, why is THF important? Because we need to make DNA. Why do you need to make DNA? Because I need cell replication. Why do you need cell replication? Because it's called erythropoiesis. I'm trying to make new red blood cells. And that's why in order for you to make good red blood cells, you need to have good folate level in your blood. Folate deficiency can cause anemia. Also, folate is dependent on B12, and that's why you need B12 to make red blood cells. Therefore, B12 deficiency can cause anemia. Because medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. What are the causes of folate deficiency? Decrease supply or increase demand? Decrease intake, malabsorption, some drugs inhibit folate and increase utilization. Pause and review. Let's talk about B12. Again, check out my biochemistry playlist. B12 is known as cobalamin. Cobalamin is absorbed in the terminal ileum. B12 absorption is a very complex process and you need many normal, robust organs in order to do this. You need good food. You need some supreme salivary glands. You need a robust stomach. You need a doozy pancreas, some competent gut bacteria. You need the terminal ileum to be intact and you need your liver to store it. Why do I need vitamin B12? Because it helps you make DNA and it helps you replicate your cell. Hashtag erythropoiesis, hashtag hematopoiesis. What causes B12 deficiency? Maybe you're not eating enough. Maybe you have salivary gland disease. Maybe you have pernicious anemia or stomach disease. Maybe you have pancreatitis. Maybe you have prolonged use of antibiotics. You have used too much of these killing all of your gut bacteria. Maybe you have removed your terminal ileum, or maybe it has been invaded by a parasite known as Diphilobothrium latum. Or maybe you have a liver disease and cannot store it. Now, what is anemia? Anemia is when you have less red blood cells or decreased red blood cell mass. And when this happens, you will have decreased red blood cell count. If I count your red blood cells, they will be less you will have decreased hemoglobin concentration and you will have a low hematocrit value. Please memorize these three. Okay, medicosis, my patient has anemia. How did you know, doofus? Well, red blood cell count was low, hemoglobin concentration is low, and hematocrit value is low. Awesome, you're not a doofus anymore. Then the next question is what type of anemia? Is it microcytic anemia, normocytic anemia, or macrocytic anemia? In other words, are the cells small? Are these red blood cells normal in size? Or are they big like this? How do I know, medicosis? Get the MCV level, which literally stands for the mean corpuscular volume. What is corpuscular? Corpuscular is the red blood cell. It's referring to the red blood cell. And the volume is basically asking, is it small, is it medium, or is it large? Normal MCV is between 80 to 100 femtoliters. Therefore, Less than that, microcytic. More than that, microcytic. 
Iron deficiency anemia causes microcytic anemia. Bleeding causes normocytic anemia. Bone marrow failure, usually normocytic anemia. Vitamin B12 deficiency, macrocytic. Folate deficiency, macrocytic. Speaking of macrocytic anemia, where your red cells are big like this, we call them macrocytes or macroovalocytes, is divided into two things megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic is folate deficiency and B12 deficiency. Non-megaloblastic is liver disease, alcohols, and drugs. How do I know if it's megaloblastic or non-megaloblastic? You will need to look in the blood of the patient in a peripheral smear. If you see the neutrophils like this hypersegmented, because normally they should have like three to four lobes, something like that. But if you see something like six lobes, oh, seven lobes, ma'am, what's going on? This is called hypersegmented neutrophils. And when it's hypersegmented like this, you can bet the rent money. This is megaloblastic anemia, and you can bet the rent money. This patient is either folate deficient, B12 deficient, or both. What are the signs and symptoms of anemia? Tired and pale, pale and tired. Sometimes I have angina. Sometimes I have a flow, systolic murmur. Sometimes I get headache, dyspnea, which is shorts of breath, dizziness, exercise intolerance, and a hyperdynamic circulation. Some pearls for the pros. If you eat too much folate, this can mask and cover and hide the symptoms of B12 deficiency. So a patient with B12 deficiency can fool his doofus doctor by eating too much folate. This will mask the lab results, but it will not mask the neurological symptoms of B12 deficiency. And that's why you need to be a good doctor and not a doofus. When you have fewer red blood cells than normal, we call it anemia. But when you have too many, we call it polycythemia. Amia means blood, cyte means cell, poly means many, many cells in the blood. We are referring to the red blood cells. Polycythemia has a nickname, erythrocytosis, which also means lots of red blood cells. Causes could be relative or absolute relative. Do not blame the red blood cells. What happens is your blood is made of plasma and red blood cells. That's right. What if I'm losing plasma only? Well, this will give us the illusion that the red blood cells are high. They are relatively high, but they are not absolutely high. Okay. But what if my uh, red blood cells are absolutely high? Well, it could be primary or secondary. Primary, polycythemia vera, which is cancer, erythrocyte receptor mutation, which is a genetic defect. In these cases, EPO will be low. Why is this? It's a negative feedback. My body is making too many red blood cells. So why the flip would I need EPO? EPO should go down. Thank you, EPO, for being so obedient. But what if it's secondary? Well, it could be compensatory or appropriate. It could be abnormal or inappropriate. We're trying to ask the question, why did EPO go up? Well, it could be appropriate increase. EPO is just doing his job properly. For example, I have hypoxia. Oh, if you have hypoxia, you have less oxygen. Therefore, you cannot give enough oxygen to the tissue. Therefore, you need more EPO to get you more red blood cells. That's a good polycythemia. This is appropriate. And this happens with COPD, obstructive sleep apnea, high altitude, carbon monoxide poisoning, right to left chunt, which is a cyanotic heart disease. And if you have too much androgen, such as people who abuse anabolic steroids, because all of these conditions will lead to appropriate increase in EPO. But what if it's inappropriate? Well, that's a cancer, such as renal cell carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, cancer in the kidney, cancer in the liver, pheochromocytoma, that's your adrenal medulla tumor, hemangioblastoma in the brain. What is polycythemia vera? It's a cancer. It's a cancer that produces too many red blood cells. And that's why EPO will go down. Check out my video called Polycythemia Vera on my hematology playlist. If you like this video, check out my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectsnatus.com. It comes with 10 videos, 10 cases, notes, etc. And for a limited time, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code KIDNEY for a limited time only. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.